Hello everyone, this is Roman from Scandinavian Study and with me here is Irina. Irina is my colleague from Netherlands. Uh, she's representing school where you applied, probably where you applied because you're watching this video. She's from in Holland. Welcome, Irina. Thank you so much, Roman. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. And I was thinking to prepare a short video with basic FAQ questions that might arise so I can distribute it among the students and you are the person who has the answers. I hope All so. right, uh, let's do it. Uh, Irina, if you can tell me just some quick, or if you can sum up quickly calendar, what will be happening in upcoming weeks, upcoming months? I believe most of students, they receive preliminary admissions and they uploaded already their final diplomas. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, it depends a little bit on when you've applied. Uh, for the course, but hopefully uh, all of you have received already your uh, admission under condition. If you haven't yet, you can always contact me or contact Roman, who is going to contact me, and then we're going to organize that paperwork for you. Um, in terms of admission paperwork, you should be pretty much done by now. If there are any general questions or something that worries you, just get in touch with me. Um, the school buildings will remain open, but majority of my colleagues are going on holidays starting from the 17th of July, mm -hmm. and they're going to be coming back around the 20th of August. Um, any questions during the summer should come to me. Again, you can either contact Roman and he can put you in contact with me, or um, also Roman, you can share my email address with them. Mm -hmm. Working the whole summer, me and my colleague, we're going to be here. Also, our student ambassadors are working the whole summer. Um, you can reach out to them through our website. Um, so if there's absolutely anything during the summer, we are here. Okay, just to not forget, maybe if you can share the screen and, and to show the web page with uh, student ambassadors, yeah. so it's easy to catch up with them. And while you will find it, the semester start will be later August or beginning of September. All right, let me just show this for mm -hmm. you. So it's on our main page, my carousel is, there we go. Mm -hmm. You scroll down, you see chat with a student, you click here. And then you see the students from all the programs. Excellent. So you can contact them at any point, they'll be working, right? All right, that, that was even Slovak students. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's, uh, he's actually a graduate, he, he's uh, exceptional. All oh, right, like um, all Slovak students, right? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, yeah, like all Slovak <laughs> students. Um, all right, so the uh, the courses should be starting on the fifth of September. However, from the week of the twenty seventh of, let me just make sure I have those dates right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, fifth of September. But from the week of the twenty ninth of August, there will be introduction activities you guys should have received information about this on the my start app that i hope all of you have mm -hmm. if you don't please go to the respective store that you use according to your operation system and download it's called my start app uh, you also must have received um, an email from my admission office telling you download app mm -hmm. all right and this event is not mandatory but it's more than necessary to attend because you will go through all the necessary information I am, regarding... tempted, to say, I am tempted to say it's mandatory because i have experience with students who miss the introduction activities and then they're lost for the first month all the information mm -hmm. that you're gonna uh, need registration in the city hall getting a bank account insurances how the credit system works exams everything that you're gonna need is going to be doing those introduction activities first and mm -hmm. second you're going to get to know the people with whom you're going to study if you arrive three weeks in there are already groups formed people have friends and you're going to be the new one going uh, what's happening so it's really important all right and it's pretty much the same for each city and each campus doesn't matter if it is uh, amsterdam delft or hack the dates are about the same yes mm -hmm. the activities are different of course depending on on the program uh, but additional information for that will be available in the app. And if it's not, again, just reach out to me. I'll get that figured out for you. Okay. Irina, if I'm not mistaken, maybe it's just that me and students know it already, when they will receive some official document that they can use for bureaus in Slovakia that they are admitted. Uh, we don't do that anymore. Those are All done right. on request. 
Okay. So for us, the official document of your admission is your student card. If mm -hmm. you need a paper for any type of administrative purposes back home, like, you know, student finance or insurance, you're going to have to request that. Again, okay. it usually they need it for insurance company because they have to sign out from insurance company here. And obviously they will be signed in in, in Netherlands. Yeah, if you need any type of official document, it can be requested either through me or through the admission office. Mm -hmm. Okay, Irina. Now the big, big question and the hard question regarding accommodation. It, it's a challenge in Netherlands, but it's not impossible, right? All those students, they have to live somewhere. I am going to be a little bit harsh here. Yeah. And I'm going to say it is a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. So please, guys, take this seriously. Um, we do have some accommodation, but it works on a first come, first served basis. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you where on the website you can find this. So mm -hmm. this is the main page. If you scroll down and if you go to study at in Holland mm -hmm. and then you scroll down again until you find accommodation. All right. And then uh, here you scroll down again, and that's divided by, by campuses. Let's pick Harlem, for example. You have short stay for exchange students. This is not for you. And then you have long stay, which is for degree seekers. That's how we refer to you. Uh, you go here, and here you get the information, application deadlines, and contacts with the um, international offices on location. Um, the web pages are pretty much the same about the locations. You'll mm -hmm. get different uh, contacts depending on or where you're going. Um, again, if there's any help needed, you can always come to me. Um, a thing that I'd like to stress is if you choose to look for accommodation in private market, some students choose to do that. Um, please don't transfer money in advance. Don't send your uh, copies of IDs and things like this. Sadly, there are scams. It, it happens. Um, so please, if you're looking for accommodation in a uh, private market, if you get something and you think, hey, this is cool, just send me a quick mail. Hey, Irina, have a look at this ad. Is it realistic? Do you think it's real? Uh, that's why I'm here. And if I can mention, uh, as Irina said, if you will be sending money, send it through the bank to the bank in Netherlands, never send it through MoneyGram or those... Uh, even that I would strongly advise against, unless like, again, you check with us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And guys, take it really seriously. Every year it happens that students don't find accommodation, even you, if you are admitted, and it would be a big shame if you will not start your foreign experience just because of lack of your patience, lack of your effort you put into accommodation you have to really seek for it not just send one two emails and wait for response try to find as many possible options try to reach them somehow by phone by whatsapp sending emails just do a lot of actions <laughs> and if you do create a lot of actions some reaction comes in in form of your possible accommodation uh irina regarding arrival to the to netherlands let's say one month in advance would be reasonable? We normally say at least a week before the introduction activity mm -hmm. start. If you guys can arrive a month in advance, that was, that would be better for you because it's a new country. It's a new everything. You know, you need to figure out the supermarket and the transport and a bike and this and that. So if that is possible, it will be great. Also, somewhere in the Netherlands is really cool. There's a lot of activities. There are a lot of festivals. There are a lot of really nice social things going on. So if it's possible, sure. Um, if not, we normally say the week before the introdu introduction activity start um, is, is a okay period. And also usually when you rent a room, so, so usually you rent it from the first in a month. So you pay in any way. Not here, not here. Here is also possible to rent it from the 15th. All right. Uh, for the student accommodation, there are set dates. Mm -hmm. um, so it's slightly different with accommodation here. Mm -hmm. Okay. My next question is what to bring. And obviously, in Netherlands, it's a flat country and everyone is cycling. <laughs> is it reasonable to bring your own bicycle or you buy bicycle on second-hand market in Netherlands? 
Um, okay, what to bring? Uh, laptop, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, phones, chargers, stuff like this. Um, any type of prescription medicine, if anyone is taking stuff like this, it's good to bring from home because um, it can be a bit overwhelming with the healthcare system in the Netherlands. Um, a rain jacket, if you have one. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything else you can get from here. I mean, don't bother bringing plates and like cutlery and stuff like this. Uh-huh. It's really not necessary. And for the bikes, unless you bike a super specific racer, for example, or a fixie or something very, very specific, I'd always advise buy a bike here. They're available everywhere. They're super cheap. Um, there is no point financially to go, unless you're traveling with a car, maybe, where you can get mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on top of the car. But other than that, financially, it's not worth it um, bringing a city bike. Mm-hmm. In regarding study materials or books, uh, students will get the list of study material and it, can, and it can be purchased once they are in Netherlands, right? Okay, so it depends on the program. Some programs work exclusively with the online material. So some programs don't even have books. Some programs do have books and then you're going to get the list in, during the introduction activities. Mm-hmm. It will also be published in the app. Now, when it comes to books, uh, we always say, try to get them secondhand. It's possible. There are markets online. Um, uh, students, of course, are super resourceful. I have students, for example, the math books for the engineering courses that are quite expensive. You have five, six students that get together. They buy one book, then they copy it, um, and they all have the book for one-fifth of the price. That's also perfectly fine. Um, don't order anything from back home. Just come here, get the list, check with your student, check with your teachers, and um, and then you you'll find everything that you need. Mm-hmm. Students needs also to work, uh, obviously part time work. How difficult it is to find a w- work in pretty much every city in Netherlands? Uh, what kind of jobs students are working in? What should they expect? Uh, well, there's plenty of work. Uh, there's plenty of work. Um, don't imagine office jobs. Of course, it's mostly catering. You know, it's cafes, restaurants, bars. There's a lot of my students who work in uh, food delivery. Uh, there's a lot of my students who work in the these fast uh, grocery delivery uh, bicycle things. I don't know if you guys have them in Slovakia. It's basically yeah. delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, I have students who work in... Uh, so supermarket packing spaces but there is plenty of work um it depends on how well you can organize yourself between your study and your work because you are here for study so excuses such as oh i couldn't come to class because i was at work don't fly mm-hmm. we expect you to prioritize your school of course but yeah 90 percent of my international students work it's it does not seem to be a huge issue um it's not difficult to find jobs again be realistic in what you expect it's not going to be an office job it's not going to be something fancy um also in terms of cities all of them work also guys um i have quite a few students who work for me there are always jobs in school we need ambassadors we need help with open days with events with uh, the events that roman and i organize and in uh, here and there so uh, there's also a possibility to become an ambassador and work for school and, and again, I would like to stress the first reason or the main reason why you're going to, to Netherlands, to any of the campuses, is to get education. And even if the salary at restaurant and a bar might be appealing, so if, if you think you can have that many hours, so you earn 1,000 euro, 1,500, the real money comes when you graduate and when you find the proper job. And you should prioritize, as Irina said, to get as much education and to get knowledge and then you will enter the, the real uh, job market. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, regarding the budget, I believe I have experience with students. So not every student will find the job on day one. And even if they find, they will get paid at the end of the month or maybe after one and a half month. So what should be reasonable budget to bring for the first few months, just to, be f- just to not need to really find the job from day, day one? If you have paid your tuition fees in advance, 
um, I'd say 1,000, 1,200 euro per month mm -hmm. should be okay. Um, again, that's a really, that's a really, um, I mean, some people live very lavishly, some people live less lavishly. So it very much depends on what you're used to. But about 1,000, 1,200 euro should be enough for food, um, accommodation, bike, um, you know, maybe occasional cinema ticket. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's call it 4,000 in, in advance and you should be all right for the easy start and somehow slowly to start looking for the job and start to get income also yeah. from your, for your part-time yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, also in the Netherlands, you have euros as we have euros or oh, we have euros as you have euros because you was the first so they don't have to exchange the money but i think so much reasonable way would be not bring a lot of cash with you absolutely don't bring a lot of cash with you know just just take bank cards and you can pay anywhere in netherlands with your bank yeah. card or credit um card. an important thing is that visa credit cards do not work in this country mm -hmm. so if you're using a credit card, it has to be Maestro. Visa mm -hmm. does not work. Mm -hmm. Nobody accepts it. And I every year I have students going, oh, so make sure if it's a credit card, it has to be Maestro. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Uh-huh. Uh, if you can just sum up on student loans, stu students in Netherlands have opportunity to get small amount of money from government, which is repayable. What should be the proper procedure to apply when to expect to get money and how to pay it back? All right, so they're changing the procedure again. All right. Uh, so at this specific point of time, I am not willing to give any information because we mm -hmm. don't know what they're going to come up with. Uh -huh. In theory, you need to have a job first to work minimum 56 hours a month, which is about day and a half per week. Mm -hmm. After that, there is a set of documents you need to submit, and then you're eligible for either a loan or a grant. Again, not going in detail because we're waiting for the new procedure. When you guys come and if you need questions, uh, if you need help with that, just come to me or the international office on location. We will help you once we know the process. Uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to repayment, you have, I believe, 15 years after you graduate. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not sure because they are changing those rules. Mm -hmm. I believe it's 15 years. Um, you can pay in installments. I believe the smallest installment is 35 euro a month. Mm -hmm. So you might decide to pay it at once or you might decide to pay it for the next 50 years. It's up to you. And the interest rates are incredibly low. It's 0.02% or something like this. So it's, it's almost a low, uh, an interest-free loan, almost. Um, and the other thing for repayment is that you need to earn a minimum amount in order for the government to force you to repay the, to repay the loan. So let's say the first couple of years, maybe your salary is a little bit lower. Nobody's going to chase you. You need to reach a certain threshold. And only after that, the government is going to say, hey, you know, you're earning enough to support yourself. Start paying us back. And it also depends on the country where you end up after the school. It's probably the, the threshold yeah. is different yeah. from Netherlands to Slovakia yeah. or to Hungary yeah. or to Bulgaria. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, maybe, Irina, my last question is students like to have something in paper or maybe some online brochure or something regarding pre-arrival. Are they getting those information or everything is to be found on your webpage or in the app? Everything is on the webpage or in the app. <laughs> uh, the Netherlands um, is really focusing on sustainability. Uh -huh. So printing is becoming more and more challenging for me All as right. a recruiter. Uh -huh. um, but look, if you guys, you know, if you prefer to have something in the writing, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not, there will not be a physical brochure, mm -hmm. but you can always contact me and I'll write it out in a mail or like make a checklist or something um, if that is really necessary. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Irina, I think so. We covered up quite a few details and important stuff to speak about i would just recall it like first thing first download uh, the app my startup into your phone yeah then really really look for the accommodation and find it not just look for the accommodation just find it and look for it until you find it and third point i would say come for introduction activities it's really really important 
so you are not like left behind and you will be the one who is asking all the questions when you should already know. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. I wish you a lovely, lovely holiday. I'm not going on holiday again. I want to point <laughs> yeah, out as well that uh, if at any point anyone has any questions, we're here. We are here the whole summer. Excellent. Thank you very much, Irina. You are starter for doing this. And guys, I wish you a good start in Netherlands. If you have any questions or you need some help, contact us as a Scandinavian study or speak directly or write directly to guys from in Holland. Thank you very much, Irina. Thank you, Roman. Have a lovely day.